This discovery shocked archaeologists and scientists around the world. Locals were afraid to come close because they were met with the smell of a corpse, hobbit remains, or a vampire child. What were historians hiding from us and why will history have to be rewritten? Why should we prepare for a new pandemic? Find out about this and more in the video. Hi friend, you are on the Kirtop channel. Sword of Pharaoh Ramses II Archaeologists are increasingly making discoveries in northern Egypt. Recently, a sword of Pharaoh Ramses II was discovered there. Excavations were conducted in the province of El Buhera, where architectural blocks were found that were once part of military barracks and weapons depots. In addition, personal belongings of soldiers of that time were found. This find confirms the importance of the El Abkain fort as a key point of the Egyptian army. The sword found is made of bronze and has a cartouche with the name of Ramses II. Weapons, amulets, hygiene products, and the burial of a cow were also found. Ramses II, who reigned for more than 60 years, is considered one of the greatest pharaohs of Egypt. The Mysterious Pictish Ring A surprising find has recently been discovered on the coast of Scotland, a ring that is about 1,000 years old. But it was not a professional archaeologist who found it, but a 68-year-old former engineer, John Ralph, who was simply looking for something to do in retirement. Having joined the excavations at Berghead, John enthusiastically began participating in the project, where he has already worked on three different sites. The excavation site is a former settlement of the Picts, one of the most important peoples of Scotland, who existed from 500 to 1000 AD. At first, John found only stones and other small items that experts did not consider particularly valuable. But one day, while cleaning the floor of an ancient building, he noticed a metal pin, and next to it, the very ring. Despite being in the ground for thousands of years, the ring still sparkled, and even its details were visible. The Picts, known as the Painted Ones because of their tattoos, were powerful warriors who successfully resisted the invasions of the Romans and the Angles. They played a key role in the formation of Scotland, but by the end of the first millennium, they suddenly disappeared from history, merging with another people, the Gales. Therefore, the discovered ring is not just a decoration, but an important historical artifact that can shed light on the mysterious culture of the Picts. Oldest Burial Site in Malaysia Archaeologists have discovered more than a dozen ancient burial sites in Malaysia that are up to 16000 years old. The finds were made in the Ningiri Valley about 215 kilometers north of Kuala Lumpur. These caves may soon be flooded to create a reservoir for a hydroelectric dam planned for 2027. If this happens, 20 square miles of land will be underwater. Most of the skeletons found belong to the pre-Neolithic culture of the region. Some scientists associate this culture with the Hoa Bin hunter-gatherers known for their distinctive stone tools found throughout Southeast Asia. They are also believed to have used wild plants, many of which became the basis for the region's modern flora. Archaeologists found 16 skeletons in 13 caves at four different sites. Most of them were buried in a squatting position, which is typical of the pre-Neolithic period. However, one of the skeletons was buried in an extended position and is approximately 6,000 years old. In addition to the skeletons, over 71000 artifacts were discovered, including stone tools, pottery, and jewelry. One of the key finds was a complete human skeleton in the Gua Keladung Ketchel Cave, which is approximately 14000160000 years old. It is the oldest and most complete skeleton ever found in Malaysia. The burial items included stone tools, crystals, and hematite minerals. The Sultan's Treasure The Hell's Well, or Barhuda Hole, is a mysterious sinkhole in Yemen surrounded by legends and myths. Locals believe that the Sultan's treasure was at the bottom of the well guarded by genies and the dead and that a graveyard smell emanated from there. Scientific research has confirmed some of these legends. Speleologists finally decided to explore the sinkhole, taking samples from its bottom. The sinkhole is cone-shaped. Its diameter at the surface is about 30 meters and widens to 120 meters at the bottom. The depth of the well is 112 meters. The upper layer is porous, allowing water to pass through, and below the layer becomes denser and impermeable, which leads to the formation of four waterfalls and stalagmites. The Sultan's treasure turned out to be cave pearls, rare formations of calcium carbonate that form around a grain of sand or a piece of wood. 
In Barkett, they are emerald golden in color, which probably misled ancient observers. Snakes and arthropods live at the bottom of the funnel. The grave smell described by locals is caused by the decomposing bodies of animals, mainly birds, which fly into the well in search of shelter from the heat. Having sunk to the bottom, they cannot fly back up because of the great depth. There are two main hypotheses about the origin of the well. The first is that it is a former crater of an underground volcano that has long since died out. The second is that it is a natural well formed by the leaching of underground layers of water over millions of years. Most likely, the Barkett well was formed in the second way, which explains its unusual structure and content. Hobbit Remains Thorin, as archaeologists have nicknamed him, lived about 40, 50,000 years ago at a time when the last Neanderthals were disappearing from the face of the earth. His remains were found in a cave in the south of France, where he probably hid from the bitter cold. In 2015, archaeologists discovered a well-preserved fossilized jaw with 31 teeth and finger bones. Interestingly, Thorin's teeth, despite being worn down from active chewing, were in good condition. Analysis showed that he was an adult male, probably quite young, since Neanderthals lived on average about 20 years. The most striking thing was the genetic study. Thorin's DNA was very different from all known Neanderthal samples. This indicates an isolated population that separated from the rest of the Neanderthals about 100, 105,000 years ago. It is curious that just 10 days' walk from this cave, there lived another community of Neanderthals, but judging by the analysis, they did not communicate. Researchers speculate on how Neanderthals perceived the world and why they were so isolated. Uncommunication was their characteristic feature. At the time of their existence, there were about 10,000 Neanderthals in the world, and over hundreds of thousands of years, they became unsociable. They had a high inbreeding rate, which is confirmed by many congenital anomalies. Finding one of the last Neanderthals is a huge success. Isotopes in the bones confirm that Thorn lived in the harsh climate of the Ice Age. Scientists are still arguing about why the Neanderthals disappeared because of the harsh climate or competition with the Cro-Magnons. Anthropologists believe that climate was not a decisive factor because the Ice Ages began long before their disappearance. Probably the more developed Cro-Magnons displaced them. Cro-Magnons were not against interbreeding, and the genome of modern humans contains an admixture of Neanderthals while no traces of sapiens have been found in Neanderthals. Interestingly, a fragment of bone with a scratched picture, possibly depicting a mammoth, was recently found in the Bryansk region in Russia. This is a rare example that indicates the presence of fine art among Neanderthals, while Cro-Magnons left many works. A Bearded European in Ancient China Archaeologists in China have discovered a unique Tang Dynasty tomb decorated with colorful murals that shed light on daily life in the 8th century. Of particular interest is the depiction of a fair-haired bearded man believed to be of European descent. The tomb was discovered in 2018 during a road renovation in Shangxi province, but details of the excavations have only recently become known. The walls are decorated with scenes from life done in the style of figures under trees. They depict daily activities, women pounding grain, men making noodles, collecting water and processing rice. The tomb belonged to a man who died in 736 CE at the age of 63, and his wife. Almost all the figures are depicted as ethnic Chinese, with the exception of one man with fair hair and a beard. History professor Victor Xiong believes that he was a Sogdian, a Central Asian who was probably active on the Silk Road trade routes. The frescoes occupy the entire tomb except the floor and are executed in a style typical of the Tang Dynasty. Clear outlines, simple shading, and two-dimensional images. In addition to the wall paintings, the gate, corridor, and pedestal were decorated. The roof of the dome is distinguished by a dragon design. The presence of a Western man adds mystery to the familiar picture of the lives of nobles of that time. The Disappearance of the Ancient Civilization 900 years ago, one of the world's largest civilizations, Cahokia, disappeared. New research has challenged the old theory that drought and crop failure were the cause. The Cahokia Mounds, located near modern-day St. Louis, were a thriving settlement with a population of about 50000 people. By 1400, the site was deserted, and the reasons for the mass exodus remain a mystery to archaeologists. Archaeologists analyzed the soil of Cahokia studying the carbon isotopes left behind by plants that grew during the mass exodus. 
The results showed that the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-13 remained stable. This indicates that there were no significant changes in the local vegetation and does not support the version of crop failure. It is known that the inhabitants of Cahokia were inventive and may have had the skills to irrigate and store crops. They also had a varied diet, including fish, birds, deer, fruits, and nuts, which would have ensured their survival even if some food sources were lost. So why did they abandon Cahokia? Archaeologists suspect it was a long process caused by external factors. To better understand why, scientists plan to create a database of paleobotanical evidence and conduct experiments with growing ancient crops in controlled conditions. Ancient Hater in Russia, in Veliki Novgorod, archaeologists have discovered a birch bark letter in which the author advises the addressee to hang themselves. Russian scientists have studied the finds made this season in the Novgorod region. Among them, a small letter with one word stands out. A certain Prokosha laconically wrote, Hang yourself in a letter to Neche. Apparently, even then, there were some kind of remote haters. Unfortunately, the beginning and end of this correspondence have not yet been found. Most of the found artifacts date back to the 12th century. However, not all the letters were so rude. In one of them, the scribe Roshka politely addressed Stepan with a request. Another letter mentions a water test. The accused was thrown into the water, and he was considered guilty if the water did not accept him. Melting glaciers will cause a new pandemic. Researchers at Ohio State University have made an incredible discovery finding more than 1,700 previously unknown viruses in an ice core extracted from the Gulia Glacier on the Tibetan Plateau. The ice core was drilled more than 300 meters deep and divided into nine segments, each covering different time horizons and climate periods. The segments range in age from 160 to 41000 years. Using metagenomic analysis, the scientists were able to identify viral strains, collecting 50 times more virus data than was previously known. They found that viral communities varied significantly depending on the climate conditions during their preservation in the ice. This discovery raises concerns that as glaciers melt, pathogens capable of causing deadly pandemics could be released. Immediately after the study was published, rapper Chris Bridges posted a video of himself drinking meltwater from a glacier in Alaska. The video quickly racked up millions of views, raising concerns that he was putting himself at risk by drinking untreated glacial water. However, glaciologists have assured that water from melted glaciers is generally safe and is considered the cleanest water you can get. However, scientists warn of a real threat of new pandemics due to the release of ancient viruses. An example is the 2016 anthrax outbreak when spores were released from melting permafrost. Fortunately, the viruses found in Gulia Glacier are not dangerous to humans and are only capable of infecting archaea and bacteria. Honey in Africa Honey is humanity's oldest sweetener, and for thousands of years, it was the only one. Petroglyphs dating back 8,000 to 40000 years have been found on various continents, hinting at the importance of bees and their products. Ancient Egyptian reliefs show evidence of beekeeping as early as 2600 BC. However, until recently, there was no direct archaeological evidence of honey collection in sub-Saharan Africa. A study of chemical food residues on pottery shards has changed this idea. Archaeologists from Goethe University working with chemists from the University of Bristol have discovered traces of beeswax in 3,500-year-old pottery shards belonging to the Nok culture. This culture, which existed in central Nigeria from 1500 BC to the beginning of the Common Era, is known for its terracotta sculptures, the oldest figurative sculpture in Africa. The researchers wanted to understand whether the Nok people domesticated animals or were hunters. However, in the acidic soil conditions typical of the Nok region, animal bones do not survive. So the scientists turned to the analysis of molecular food residues in the pottery. Plant and animal products leave stable chemical compounds, especially lipids, in the pores of clay vessels. Using gas chromatography, these compounds can be detected after thousands of years. The study revealed not only the remains of wild animals, but also components indicating the presence of honeybees. About a third of the examined pottery shards contained high molecular lipids typical of beeswax. This is the first direct evidence of honey use in Africa. 
it is not yet possible to determine exactly how honey was used. It is possible that the Nok people separated honey from wax by heating. They may also have used honey for cooking, making mead, or for technical and medicinal purposes. It is possible that the clay vessels served as beehives, as is still practiced by some African peoples. Ancient Multiplication Table Archaeologists have discovered a fragment of a wooden tablet with one of the oldest multiplication tables in Japan in the ruins of the Fujiwara Palace in the Japanese prefecture of Nara. The age of the find is about 1300 years. The ruins of the Fujiwara Palace are the remains of an ancient capital that existed until 710 when the capital moved to Nara. The tablet was found at the site of what is believed to be the Amon Fu guard post in the Fujiwara government. The size of the find is 16.2 centimeters by 1.2 centimeters. Researchers believe that it was part of a more complete multiplication table, which dates back to the late 7th or early 8th century. Even then, such tables were used in government agencies. Using infrared analysis, the following equations were deciphered from the tablet. All the inscriptions are written in kanji, Chinese characters that are also used in modern Japanese. The multiplication table begins with multiplication by 9 and contains 5 equations written horizontally in one line. If the tablet were intact, its length would be about 33 centimeters. This five-line writing style corresponds to Chinese styles from the Qin and Han dynasties. The tablet was likely used by the Amon Fu office, which was responsible for security and administrative tasks, including counting workdays and taxes. Secrets of the Underworld of Agartha the legend of the underground world of Agartha has always attracted the attention of those who sought hidden knowledge and secret civilizations. The Nazis showed great interest in the myth of Agartha, a supposedly deep underground state inhabited by an advanced civilization with mystical knowledge and advanced technology. It was believed that the inhabitants of Agartha could possess the secrets of immortality, energy, and world control which interested the Nazi elite. Some Nazi ideologists saw in Agartha not only a source of ancient knowledge, but also a possible refuge for the elite of the Third Reich in the event of defeat on the surface. According to the theory, this underground world could provide a reliable shelter and create conditions for the revival of Nazi power. Legends claim that the entrance to Agartha was hidden somewhere in the Himalayas or other hard-to-reach regions of the Earth. Ananirba researchers, obsessed with finding Aryan roots and ancient civilizations, organized expeditions to different parts of the world, including Tibet and Antarctica, in search of an entrance to the underworld. Despite the lack of concrete evidence of Agartha's existence, the Nazis continued to fund these projects, hoping to gain access to mystical knowledge that could change the course of the war and increase their influence. The Voynich Manuscript Again American medievalists have used multispectral scanning to discover how a 17th-century Prague physician attempted to decipher the mysterious Voynich manuscript. Scientists used multispectral analysis to study the manuscript, obtaining images that are inaccessible to conventional research. This technology can reveal erased or faded texts, as iron-based ink can fluoresce under ultraviolet light. Historian Lisa Fagan Davis recently analyzed these images and discovered vertical columns of symbols on one of the pages. The first column contained the classic Latin alphabet of 23 letters, the second contained symbols from the manuscript's unknown alphabet, and the third contained Latin shifted by one character. This table looks like an attempt to decipher the text using the symbol substitution method common in the Middle Ages and the New Age. A comparison of the handwriting of the manuscript's known owners showed that the table was compiled by Johannes Marcus Marcy, a scientist and court physician. He owned the book from 1662 to 1665 and attempted to decipher the manuscript, as did his predecessors and followers. Multispectral analysis also confirmed that the manuscript was not a palimpsest, and carbon-14 analysis correctly dated it to 1425. Vampire Child Workers cleaning up near a historic cathedral in Chelm, Poland, found the remains of two children in a shallow pit. The Polish culture ministry said the site was not marked as a cemetery. One of the skeletons showed signs of an anti-vampire burial. The child's head had been severed from the body and placed face down on a rock. This is consistent with ancient burial practices used to prevent those believed to be demonic beings from coming back to life. The skeletons are believed to date back to the early Middle Ages. The remains have been removed and are awaiting further study. 
The discovery is another example of practices used to protect against vampires or other supernatural entities. In 2022, Polish researchers found the remains of a woman with a sickle around her neck and a triangular lock on her leg in the village of Penn. The lock was believed to keep the vampire in the grave and the sickle was supposed to cut off the head if the body tried to get up. Such practices were common in the 17th century due to the vampire epidemic. In 2013, six vampire skeletons were found in a cemetery in northwestern Poland, each with a sickle around their neck or a stone under their jaw. Board Game Will Rewrite History The ancient board game, Dogs and Jackals, or 58 Holes, has long been thought to be of Egyptian origin. However, a new study published in the European Journal of Archaeology suggests that a version of the game found in what is now Azerbaijan may be older, suggesting it may have Asian roots. Archaeological finds confirm the existence of many ancient board games. Last year, a 4,000-year-old board was discovered in the Kumaira Valley in Oman that may have been a precursor to the Royal Game of Ur, an early version of Backgammon. In 2022, a 500-year-old board of the game mill, previously played in Egypt and Rome, was found in the ruins of Chmilo Castle in Poland. The latest find, the Dogs and Jackals board, has been known to scientists since 1890. About 60 examples have been found in Egypt, Mesopotamia, Israel, Syria, Iran, and Azerbaijan. The board has two parallel tracks of 29 holes, using 10 sticks with the heads of jackals or dogs. The goal of the game is to move all of your pieces from the starting point to the finishing point before your opponent. Previously, the oldest version was thought to date from 2064 to 1952 BC during the reign of Mentuhotep II, indicating an Egyptian origin for the game. However, in 2018, archaeologist Walter Christ discovered a new version of the board in Gobustan, Azerbaijan indicating an earlier date for the game and potentially rewriting the origin story of the board game. Six more boards have been found in Agdash Duzu, Yeni Turkin, and Dubindi. Pottery found in the game suggests that shepherds played the game while waiting for winter to end. Researchers caution that it is difficult to accurately date this period and are hesitant to attribute the game to a specific culture. Eyeliner during excavations at the Yesilova Hoyuk burial mound in Izmir, archaeologists have discovered a beautifully preserved eyeliner tool made of stone. This unique artifact, which is over 8,200 years old, may be the oldest of its kind. The discovery opens up new horizons in understanding the lives of early Aegean settlers of the Neolithic era. Yesilova Hoyuk, located in the Bornova district, is considered the oldest prehistoric settlement in the Izmir region. Unlike central Anatolia, where houses were closely spaced, the inhabitants of Izmir preferred to live in separate dwellings. The discovered artifact resembles a stone pencil used to apply eyeliner. Its tip contains traces of black paint, presumably manganese oxide, a popular ingredient in ancient eyeliner. This 9.5 centimeters long stone applicator is the oldest of its kind. This tool demonstrates that Aegean women 8,200 years ago already paid attention to their appearance. Disappearance of the Gold Reserve one of the most intriguing mysteries of World War II is the mysterious disappearance of the Third Reich's gold reserves. In the final days of Nazi Germany, when defeat was inevitable, the leadership of the Third Reich actively exported gold, jewelry, and other valuables, trying to hide them from the advancing troops of the Soviet Army and their allies. There are numerous accounts of huge amounts of gold and other treasures being hidden in various places throughout Europe, including abandoned mines, mountain fortresses, and underground bunkers. However, most of these treasures have never been found, which has given rise to many legends and theories. Some of them claim that the Nazis used ancient magical rituals and occult knowledge to protect their treasures. According to these theories, the riches were not simply hidden, but surrounded by magical barriers or protective spells, making them inaccessible to outsiders. One of the most famous cases is the story of the Lake Toplitz Gold in Austria. Legend has it that the Nazis dumped containers of gold at the bottom of this hard-to-reach mountain lake, and the search for these treasures continues to this day. Castles and bunkers in Bavaria and the Czech Republic are also mentioned, where other valuables could have been hidden. Despite decades of searching, the bulk of the Third Reich's gold reserves have still not been found, and the controversy surrounding its location continues to excite history buffs and treasure hunters. Took the Weapon to the Grave 
While excavating an ancient burial site in Ostrowiec County, Poland, archaeologists discovered two graves that likely belonged to Vandal warriors. The cemetery, located near the town of Glinka, dates back to the 3rd to 4th centuries AD and is part of a larger site associated with the Przeworsk culture, a group that flourished in central and southern Poland during the Iron Age. The team excavated pit graves containing cremated remains and evidence of burial hearths. The graves are thought to be associated with the Vandals, a Germanic tribe that once inhabited part of what is now southern Poland. Known for their conflict with the Roman Empire, the Vandals eventually created a kingdom that spanned parts of North Africa and several Mediterranean islands. In 455 AD, under the leadership of King Geyseric, they carried out the famous sack of Rome, hastening the fall of the Roman Empire. Along with the remains, archaeologists found weapons and grave goods that indicate high-ranking warriors, including swords, shield fragments, iron spearheads, and pieces of baked clay vessels. Burn marks on these objects indicate that they were burned on a pyre along with the bodies as part of a burial ritual. Interestingly, both swords found in the graves were bent, a common practice in the Przeworsk culture. This could symbolize the warriors taking their weapons to the afterlife, or perhaps the swords were deformed to make the weapons unusable and thus deter potential grave robbers. The Origin of the Silver Vessel it took scientists 10 years to discover the origin of a unique silver vessel that is part of the Galloway Horde. It turned out that the artifact had traveled from Western Asia to Scotland. The discovery has added intrigue to one of the most important archaeological finds in the UK. The Galloway Horde was found in southern Scotland in 2014 by treasure hunter Derek McLennan. The treasure included a silver vessel wrapped in ancient cloth. Now, researchers have confirmed that the vessel was made in what is now central Iran and was transported across vast distances to Scotland more than a thousand years ago. Inside the vessel, they found valuables such as silk and brooches. Laser cleaning of the vessel revealed intricate patterns characteristic of Zoroastrianism, the state religion of the Sassanids, the last Persian empire before the Muslim conquest. The entire hoard weighed more than 5 kilograms and included silver, gold, and other valuable materials. It was found on Church of Scotland land near Balmahy. The artifact has been dated to around 900 AD and will be shown for the first time in the Silk Roads exhibition at the British Museum in London. Other items from the hoard will be on display at the National Museum of Scotland and the Kirk Cudbright Galleries. Its inclusion is significant, particularly as it is the earliest recorded silk in Scotland. Time of Troubles in Russia The eruption of the Huayna Putina volcano in Peru on February 19, 1600, influenced one of the darkest periods in Russian history, the Time of Troubles. This period coincided with the Little Ice Age, when solar activity decreased and the Gulf Stream changed. However, the decisive role in climate change was played by the volcanic eruption, which threw a huge amount of ash into the atmosphere, which led to a sharp, cold snap. The summer of 1601 in Russia was abnormally cold and rainy, which is why the harvest did not ripen. Frost hit unusually early, destroying crops. The next two years were just as harsh. Torrential rains and snow fell in the summer. The price of bread increased 18 times, which led to famine and mass deaths. In 1604 in Moscow, even in the summer, people traveled by sleigh and bread cost 25 times more than in well-fed times. Tsar Boris Godunov tried to cope with the crisis by banning speculation in grain and organizing its free distribution. However, the rich kept grain stocks, ignoring the Tsar's decrees. Godunov also tried to ease the situation of the peasants by allowing them to leave the lands of their masters, but the nobility resisted this. The peasants began to blame the Tsar, seeing God's punishment in the disasters. Popular unrest intensified. In 1605, Boris Godunov died under mysterious circumstances and his son Fyodor took the throne. However, Fyodor and his mother were soon killed, which led to the time of troubles. It ended only in 1613 when Mikhail Romanov, the founder of a new dynasty, ascended the throne. This is how a volcanic eruption in South America affected a country that was thousands of kilometers away and created a terrible crisis and famine for several years. Levey your thumbs up, kind comments, and subscribe to the channel. All this helps in promoting the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.